Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Faces with Next Gen, Faces of Next Gen Live. I don't even know the name of the show. Faces of Next Gen Live. Uh, this is a show where we get to talk to genealogists affiliated with the Next Gen community. And today, I am very pleased to introduce you to uh, Shannon Combs Bennett. How are you doing, Shannon? I'm good. How are you today, Eric? I'm doing pretty good. Good. Um, we are lucky enough to have you here today. You're a busy woman, and um, in fact, uh, you're so busy that you can write a book somehow. I haven't done that yet, and it's amazing that you've been able to do that. <laughs> I've written three. You've written three books? <laughs> you're, you're giving one of them away today. Yes. An it, autograph it, copy of uh, Genealogy Basics in 30 Minutes. Right, and it actually just won the silver the silver award, the Benjamin Franklin Award from the Independent Book Publishers Association, the IBPA, um, week ago last Friday. So on the 9th of April, um, it was announced that I was a silver award winner. So, congratulations! That's pretty cool stuff. Fourteen hundred entries, one hundred and fifty judges, fifty six categories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, it was an interesting uh, night. If you want to uh, have a chance to win this book, use the hashtag IamNextGen, and then I'm going to tell you uh, at the end of the episode what uh, question that we need the answer to. It. But you have to stay tuned. So, all right, with all that out of the way, you ready to start the interview, Shannon? Sure, why not? Okay. So one of the first questions I ask, which is kind of embarrassing, so I like to get it out of the way, is what is your age? How old are you? You don't have to give me the specific year. You can give me you know, like a range of like zero to twelve. It's it's okay. I'm forty. <laughs> oh, you're forty? I am uh, thirty nine. I just turned thirty nine yesterday, so I'm yep. catching up to you. I'll be forty one this year. It's amusing because I have a teenager, and he doesn't like it when people accuse me of being his older sister. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have other kids other than just a teenager? Uh, no, I have another one who's in elementary school. I have two two boys. Very nice. Mm -hmm. when, did you, uh, when did you first start researching genealogy? Well, I didn't know genealogy wasn't a thing you didn't do. How about that? Okay. So <laughs> you've you kind of been doing it your whole life. Well, so professionally slash hardcore actual research let's say seven years. But before that, I mean, I grew up, I was an only child on one side, only grandchild on one side, and the youngest grandchild on the other side. And my grandmothers took turns babysitting me while my mother was in school, and my father owned a business when I was growing up. So I, I knew by the time I was eight, four generations back on both sides, and I knew all the family stories, and I visited the graveyards, and I, you know, worn clothes and visited homesteads, and I didn't know that none that my family was from any place other than Indiana. <laughs> and we were always from Indiana. There, what do you mean we came, we came from somewhere else? <laughs> what? Um, but no, I I just grew up with those stories because I would sit and listen. I was fascinated by them. Um, my mother's family had a reunion every year during the summer. And her, the family genealogist on her side, his name was Charlie. And every reunion, he actually, you know, started researching as soon as he got back from the Korean War. And he had, yeah, and he'd gone and done on-site genealogy research all over the Midwest. He'd gone to Salt Lake City before I even knew Salt Lake City was a thing. The best part of um, starting to go to Roots Tech the very first time I went, I found three of the books he published for the Michigan Genealogical Society. Yeah, so he was a big person and he lived just outside of Detroit. And, uh, but he would come every summer and tell amazing stories about the people he'd found and the documents. And I, I didn't know it was a word. I didn't know it was a thing. I just thought it was something people did. <laughs> You're pretty lucky then. You just were grown up in this, uh, grew up in this whole environment of um, people 
thinking genealogy is very important and uh, just transferred that on to you. Yeah, well, not only genealogy, but history. My father was a history teacher and has a master's in um, U.S. history. And so every trip was a lecture. <laughs> and it's, I didn't know people didn't do that. So <laughs> <laughs> so you, you know these people, you've known these ancestors of yours ever since you were a kid. Most of them, yeah. There were a few surprises, but... Who, who would be the one that you'd most like to meet? Well, you know, that's a really, really tough question because I'm I, trying to decide if it's the one I, I want to give me all, all the secrets that they're hiding or if it's the one that's <laughs> the most fascinating. Because <laughs> there are some where I'm like, give up the ghost, lady. I need to know who you are. <laughs> You can pick um, one, give us a name. Yeah, I think I think because there it's actually a couple. Um, it would be my um fourth great grandparents, is that right? Or are they my third? I have to I have to do the math. Grandmother, great second so it's my third great grandparents on my my father's mother's side. Um I would love to know where more about John Brennan and Bridget Gerardi. Um my um and it's because they in my family they hold this mystique um my grandmother always t she never met them obviously they were her great grandfather's parents um but her great grandfather was orphaned about the age of 8 and him and his two siblings um oh, wow. and yeah well their mother died and actually, thanks, I have to give a shout out to my friend Terry O'Connell from Chicago. Yeah. Because he found the grave that I've been looking for for forever <laughs> in Madison, Indiana. So she found Bridget's grave. I knew she was, I knew due to a memoir that their son William wrote that that's where she was buried. But she found her. And it does confirm birth, death, that she was from County Galway, oh, um, yeah. Ireland. Yeah. Um, but when she died, John put their three children in a Catholic orphanage in Indiana. And then he kept moving on with the railroad. And about 10 years after that, um, William and Timothy and their sister Mary got a telegram from the railroad saying that he was killed in Kansas. Oh. But I would just, they just held this, you know, mystique of being from Ireland. And I, and there was like, we would like to know more. And the only thing we ever knew was what, you know, was told from their kids. So yeah. I just want to know more. And I want to know where in Ireland, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what time frame are we talking about? Um, their oldest child was born in Baltimore in 1858. Okay. So it's, you know, and then my, uh, second great grandfather was born in Nashville, Tennessee in 1860. And then the last child was born in Madison, Indiana in 1862. So I've, I, it had to be because he was working the railroad that whole time because those are all railroad stops and lines, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're talking pre 1860. Probably famine, refugees, but Bridget and John. I mean, it's not like they're uncommon names to trace. <laughs> So you had mentioned that uh, there were some surprises that uh, showed up in some of your research. What uh, share share a surprise with us? Um. Okay. So here's. Oh gosh, I don't know where to start. Um. So I found out that I have a cousin who was in the mob in Chicago and was most likely killed due to a hit in the early 1950s. <laughs> Do you know how he was killed? Did he get concrete shoes or? <laughs> oh no! Um, it's actually I found the newspaper article. He had supposedly retired, and he was living just outside of St. Louis. And um, it looked like his wife had gone out for the evening, and she came home. It looked like someone had knocked at the door, and he got up in his kitchen to go to the door, and someone shot him through the screen door. Ooh. Mm -hmm. But even better is I found from the Chicago Tribune, the newspapers from the 20s, where he was the wanted man for a mob hit, <laughs> supposedly put out by Capone. And what I've been able to piece together, and another cousin has done a lot more research on this. There's actually even a book, and I don't remember the name of it, but I'll find it. 
there is a, a series of articles and a, and a small pamphlet like book put together about it where they think that Capone is the one who gave him the, the orders to go and kill this guy. So that's kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah. It's kinda, kinda, I like uh, I've talked about this before, but I really like genealogy because um, if you just give it up and, and dig for everybody and they're they're all the skeletons in their closet like uh, warts and all it's everybody a, has a story yeah it's the funnest thing to do yeah um people who know me have also heard me talk about one of these stories is on my husband's side he has his second great grandfather who assumed a new identity what and the only way i found it out was that i got his civil war pension file where uh -huh. he had to prove who he was it's over 300 pages that you 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 got to be pretty lucky in order to have that one document that connects the two names together. Oh yeah, and and if you don't know he was in the Civil War and you're not able to piece that together through research, you would never be able to break that break that brick wall because there is nothing out there that connects the two people. I mean, his kids, his my husband's grandmother. So would this that would have been his granddaughter that the the generations we're talking about. She didn't even know because their his kids swore to secrecy type of thing that they would never reveal his father's secret. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. What is that? I love that. It's just this great weird family stuff, and uh, it's oh yeah, fantastic. So uh, you had mentioned that uh, your um, uh, your uncle had written some a book, but uh, tell us about some of your other favorite books, whether it's genealogy related or not. Oh gosh. Well, okay. So I read a lot. <laughs> if you can't, you know, books, book. There's books everywhere. Um, how dare you read? Oh, know, and you, you should see my basement. It's set up like a library, and I'm not kidding. There's back-to-back -back bookshelves. <laughs> um, so that's really hard. Um, I'm trying to think of. You know, I've sat here for a couple of days. I always. One of my favorite books is Stephen King's On Writing. Have you ever have you ever read it? No, is it a nonfiction one? Because oh, it's his memoir. Oh, so no. he talks about how his publisher really wanted him to write a how-to book. You know, like a this is how you write type things. And Stephen King was like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> <laughs> so, so that what kind of he sounds did, like him. Yeah, and he's like, I don't know how I even write. How am I going to tell somebody else to write? And he's very upfront about that. So what he does is he talks about how he developed his story ideas and what was going on in his life at the time and how he, you know, it, he, one of the best parts of it is when he talks about uh, when they picked up Carrie because that was like his first novel. Mm -hmm. And he passed out in his kitchen because he thought they added too many zeros to the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> he was thinking he was getting paid like four hundred dollars, and it was four hundred thousand dollars in the nineteen seventies. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so it's a really good book. Even if you don't like his 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 novels, it's told. He has a quirky sense of humor, which, if you've ever read anything by Stephen King, is a, a great. You it kind of comes through. So, right. but it was fascinating because I love his books to begin with. To hear how he took things from everyday life and then turned them into these really odd, bizarre horror stories. Um, and then, of course, I, another good part of it is is at the end he talks about it's. I have the uh, the the tenth year edition. So if you get the the newer version, there's an addendum. Mm -hmm. Because it, it written after he was almost killed. Remember, he got hit by a car. Yeah, yeah. Truck, right. So he talks oh, about that right. process and recovering and everything. And the best line is, "I thought I was going to die. I thought I was was going to be killed by one of my characters." Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess the guy was just like could have been straight out of one of his books. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's written about so many different ways to die that uh, he's gonna oh, yeah. have to get killed by one of them if he gets killed. You know. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, so that's that's one of my my favorite books. I go back to it every so often because it actually inspires me. It it to me it teaches me that anybody can write, and he does it in such a humorous way that it's so much fun. Yeah, uh, so um, we're talking about writing. Uh, where is your favorite place to research? Where do you like to to hole up or spread out and and uh, do your research? 
Well, it really, it really depends. So I love going, um, I live in Northern Virginia and one of my favorite places to go uh, when I lived a little bit further south was I love going to the Library of Virginia. It's not as easy for me to get to now, but it's just such an amazing repository to space. Um, but other than that, usually my kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> But now that my husband has uh, given me a room with a door on it, I have this wonderful floor that I spread out on a lot. <laughs> Got it. So either either the kitchen table, your office, or Virginia mm -hmm. Library? Yep, Library of Virginia in Richmond. It's just a great place. Got it. Um, what areas uh, of, of research uh, do you have an interest in specifically? Uh, specifically. See, that's one of my problems. I, I, I'm too unfocused. Ah. <laughs> I like everything. I just, you know, people try to pin me down and try to get me to talk about a niche and what's your expertise. And I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I can, I can totally relate to that. I came out of the construction industry and um, mm -hmm. for years people have been trying to get me to, to all right, just, just do electrical work or just do plumbing work. But you know, it got boring just doing one or the other thing. And so I, I spread out and did a bunch of other things. Right. right. I mean, so I mean, my, my undergraduate degree is in genetics. So I do a lot of DNA research and I do a lot of lecturing on DNA. Um, I love to teach. Um, in another life, I thought I would become a teacher. <laughs> um, so teaching and explaining things to people is really a passion of mine, and that's why I, I love lecturing on a variety of topics that I feel that I am at least quasi-knowledgeable, if not okay at, because yeah. I want to share that enthusiasm. So besides DNA, um, I've actually studied heraldry for over 20 years, so I have a bit of, a, of an oddity for uh, heraldry research. Weren't you just uh, over the pond in Scotland, if I remember right? Yeah, I was in Scotland. Yeah, every day I went to a different cemetery, different archive, different historic building, and I took almost a thousand pictures of Harold Tree. But you were pulled <laughs> over there for your to, to give a lecture about your Harold Tree experience. Um, actually, I was at the um, International, let me see if I do this right, Gene Genealogical and Heraldic um, Symposium. Is that right? I always say it wrong. It happens every two years in Europe. The next one is going to be in Arras, France in 2018, and they will be starting accepting papers soon. Um, it is an academic conference. So it's not like a genealogy conference, which most genealogists in America would think, like where you go and you sit and you have lectures and there's a few speakers. Um, while there are just pure attendees, most people there are heavy academics in the field of research of genealogy or heraldry. Got it. Um, and it is a true academic conference. So for those of you who have, are, aren't in academia and don't know what that means, it means when you present a paper, it's usually on your current research or research that you have done that you have concluded, and you're presenting your findings. So it's, it's like you know presenting your work. You're not actually teaching. So that was a little bit different for me, and the topic that was – my, the topic that I submitted, which was chosen, was westward migration within the United States because the um, conference theme was um, migration, pathways, migrations, and origins. So I talked, uh, my husband's family are all from New England, and three of his lines ended up in Washington State in three different migratory routes. So I yeah. talked about migration from the northeast to the northwest of the United States. So all that, with my research and how I discovered it and what the typical research, what the typical patterns were and all that type of thing. So Do you have uh, an area of interest that you're currently working on learning more about or want to learn more about? Well, currently I'm in grad school, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Well, lots about Scotland. <laughs> uh, I am. Um, go ahead. No, it's your turn. Oh, okay. So, no, I, um, I'm in grad school through the University of Strathclyde out of Glasgow. Um, I'm just finishing my first year, and it's in um, genealogical, heraldic, and paleographic studies. Why don't you tell us what paleographic means? <laughs> don't you know? 
<laughs> no, I, I'm thinking dinosaurs and how dinosaurs wrote. <laughs> it's it's the study of old words oh. of like old handwriting. Okay. Paleography. Okay, I get it now. It's, it has yeah. nothing to do with dinosaurs. Nope. All right. That would be paleontology. <laughs> 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 so do you take on uh, genealogy clients then? I usually do currently right now because I'm in school. I am not. Mm -hmm. I'm still speaking and writing, but something had to give <laughs> because uh, grad school is yeah. a little time consuming. Yeah. So. so it sounds like you used to and then you picked up grad school and then uh, you, in the future, you should, sound like you'd be interested in doing. Yeah, it. I'll probably take them on again. My, some of my long-term clients, they're like, "Yeah, sure, not a problem." You know, let us know when you're done with school. We'll come right back, type of thing. Um, yeah. But it's just like I said, I had to uh, give something up because I also, to help pay for school, took on a part-time job. So Got in it. genealogy. So when you first started, you know, I know that you kind of really had a starting point, but when you first started like maybe building your own trees or doing your own re research, what was it that you wish you had known back then? Everything. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I like, wish... uh, that's like a Buddhist who walks up to the hot dog vendor and says, hey, I'll have one with everything. That's right. So um, yeah. I, I think... I think my big shock came because until, see, in Virginia in fourth grade, they do a family tree project. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I hadn't really, like, sat down and did a lot of my own research until that point in time because it was being done by other members of my family, and I just benefited by hearing the stories and, you know, doing stuff and, you know, the way it is. And um, my husband prodded me into doing more because he couldn't name past his grandparents and it really bugged me. <laughs> and <then> he did. <laughs> I'm like, dude, no, unacceptable. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, uh, I think what hit me was as a researcher and a specifically a researcher from the scientific community, I, it, when I first went out and I found online trees, it, I couldn't believe people would put information that they had not verified out there. Mm. You you already so, had the discipline then. Just Well, I mean, I'm I'm I have a degree in biology with an emphasis in human genetics. I worked in the laboratories not only in college but immediately following. Um, I worked as a quality control chemist and a microbiologist. So, having that ingrained scientific research component to my brain to me, why would you put something out there? You're publishing. Where are your sources? Where are your facts? And you must be putting it out there. It must be correct. Yeah, that that notion kind of when I finally went, no, 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 something's wrong. That person um, is, one, sometimes too young to be a mother. Or, hey, that father died after that baby was born. What the hell's going on here? Yeah. So when that realization happened and I started making more friends in the genealogy community, um, it, 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 I got no words. It, it just it hurt my head. <laughs> it floored me. And it would have, um, I think it would have been a lot less painful <laughs> if I had known that going in <laughs> to not be so loving and trusting <laughs> of these trees. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to give you an easy question then. Uh, okay. You mentioned that we've talked a little bit about some of the conventions you've been to and um, that you'd like to teach. Where will you be at a next? What convention will you be at next? Uh, do you want local, regional, or national? There is a calendar in front of you, and the next one that, that's closest to today. Okay. So <laughs> this Saturday, I'm speaking at the Virginia Genealogical Society Spring Conference in Richmond, Virginia. Nice. Next week, I'll be at the Ohio Genealogical Society presenting five lectures, and then five, I'll be at, five lectures. Yeah, it nice. at in um in Ohio at the Kalahari Resort. What town is that in? Sorry, I'm like brain dead today. Um, so I'm presenting five lectures there, and then in May I'll be at NGS. Nice. I'm not lecturing there. <laughs> Who's visiting? 
Yeah, just visiting. Okay. So uh, we're just about done here. Uh, where, if people wanted to follow you, and I wouldn't see why they wouldn't, because you're a very fascinating person. And I, and honestly, I think um, I've known you ever since I've been a part of genealogy, or not genealogy, been a part of Next Gen. I uh, lived down here in Springfield and drove up to St. Louis or St. Charles. Where, yeah, St. Charles. Mm -hmm. And we got to, I got to meet all of you guys at one of the meetups. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was uh, ever since then, I've enjoyed talking to you and, and uh, keeping your company. And, um, but I'm a bit of an oddball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've learned a lot from what you've written as well and how, and how we've talked. Cause, uh, we were um, education coordinators together for the next gen community. Yep. And uh, I got to follow your lead and, and uh, learn a lot from you. But um, so if other people wanted to do the same, where would they find you on the web? Um, well, you can find me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I post out there for, and I do have a blog at TNT fam hist, family history dot blogspot dot com. Yeah. It's all out there on the, Google me. <laughs> it'll pop up. I've got the links in the description on this Perfect. video, and um, we'll yeah. toss it out on Twitter and Facebook as well. Yeah, I um, I I always have plans to be more active on my blog. <laughs> yeah. I usually, at this point in time, it's usually when something dramatic has happened, I get out there, or if I'm at a conference and I'm talking about it, because, uh, like I said, unfortunately, um, between school and my part-time job at a lineage society in Washington, DC and being a mom, <laughs> my time has become a little, not my own. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <Get other days. laughs> well, thanks for talking today with me, Shannon. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, not a problem. Fun. Guys, don't forget that Shannon has, uh, is giving away one of the three books she's written. She's actually autographing it uh, for us, not uh, paleographing it, autographing it. And uh, it's called uh, Genealogy Basics in 30 Minutes. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on Barnes & Noble and uh, just about anywhere books are sold. Is that right? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to make sure I got everything done all right. Um, so the question uh, that you're going to use or that uh, you're going to uh, answer during this interview is, where is Shannon's favorite place to research? We talked about it earlier, and uh, use the hashtag I am next gen on Twitter, Facebook, or uh, wherever social media places you like to hang out. Well, Shannon, before we go, you have anything else you want to say? Uh, no. Nope. Hopefully, I will see everybody around. I always like to meet people in person, so don't be uh, shy or afraid to come up and say hi. <laughs> Got it. I like it. Yeah, and I would concur that she's loves to talk to people and uh we we got to hang out a little bit at the roots tech booth that um uh you and some of your uh co-writers ran at uh last year and uh in-depth genealogy booth and that was a lot of fun a lot a lot of fun let's just face it i like to talk it's hard to get me to be quiet <laughs> <laughs> all right well, we're gonna sign off here thank you so much shannon and um, You're very welcome. we will talk with you guys later